Hello everyone and welcome to an online chess class presented by me, Kestoni, and today we're going to be looking at various Rook and games. Simple and theoretical, advanced and practical, all sorts of Rook and games and um, I'm uh, welcoming you to be very very active in today's chat if you have any kind of questions uh, regarding chess, uh, Rook and games particular positions please do ask me um, I enjoy answering all of those and let's give also a couple of moments for people to to come and uh, and say hello to me don't be shy everyone who is watching and welcoming to um, to say hello to me in the chat also have to make sure that uh, you guys will be able to see me and hear me well all right i think i can see myself <laughs> that means you guys can too and hopefully you can hear me as well so if anyone can confirm that uh, the audio quality is good um just let me know in the chat i can see some people already coming very very happy to see you all hello all right all good hello mitchell hello doll hello everyone all right we can start then so at first we're going to look at a couple of very theoretical must known positions that are very easy so it's going to be how to defend uh, against uh, some of the pawns corner pawn knight pawn and if the pawn is in the middle we're going to take a look at very common positions that are called philidor and luciana and then gradually I'm going to show you the very uh, hard ones that are also very practical but I was I was preparing and uh, anyone who read um, and game books they will know that even grandmasters make so many mistakes in these end games so it just uh, tells us that uh, the price for a wrong move is high and there were a lot of uh, not uh, not one one end games uh, in the past in even the top level games all right, so let's start uh, some more very simple. Um, the first position that I would like to show you is how to draw if your opponent has an extra pawn, which is the, the side pawn. So first of all, we would love to have our king in front of that pawn. Here, our king is shielding on h1. That's a particularly very good square as it's where the pawn wants to end up on and have a new queen. And against the corner pawns a or h it is enough to have king as we do here and just walk with our rook back and forth on the first rank so uh, authors of various books describe the the method differently but i think it's called a passive defense in most or just a back rank defense and in this position black is unable to create any kind of progress so as the uh, black is trying to make something we're just walking back and forth with our rook rook a1 rook c1 rook a1 rook c1 and the, the draw will be agreed any checks are met by king walks near the corner g1 and h1 and there is nothing that black in this position can do so you wouldn't believe also how many students of mine have decided here to to start walking with the rook somewhere and try to check from behind and uh, and even have gotten mated right and i'm speaking to uh, about my very youngest students that are six year old seven year old right or inexperienced adults so also must known position uh with uh, with the knight pawn if uh, we manage to get our king onto g1 or h1 square uh, the draw looks very similarly uh, it is enough for our rook to walk back and forth on the first rank again if the king is on g1 or uh, the h1 square so we can say go rook c1 and after any check we go rook g1 and it is the only important moment to remember is that if for example black's rook is giving us a check to g2 is not to go away from the corner to f1 as then uh, the position becomes lost so king h1 here draws comfortably black is unable to create any kind of progress 
uh, again I would like to reiterate myself that king stays on g1 and h1 whereas rook stays on the first rank whichever squares are available but I would like to give you the first exercise that is perhaps the easiest out of all today um, how does black win here guys uh, black to play and and win the game so perhaps you might be playing this from the black's point of view and uh, you know that it's a theoretical draw but your opponent might make a mistake which looks like that so it is also important to know how do we win these positions how to enter anything that uh, makes progress for black and black would be able to to win this black to play and win hello gagandeep singh bindra if i pronounce that right uh king h1 is not possible for uh, for black right now it's black to play and win remember black to play and win and h1 would be this square but king cannot just jump over h2 square like that right so mitchell and also kumar is suggesting the right move and and welcome chris as well uh, the move is king h2 and that's what we wanted to prevent as white so a very simple move that makes progress uh, for the black side and now if we basically keep on waiting uh, there is a skewer first of all on g1, uh, g1 square and uh, white is losing the rook and if instead we try something like rook a8 and get from the back rank uh, eventually we're gonna get to so-called luciana position perhaps here uh, something that we're going to win um, a bit later on it's also possible just to hide like that say rook a1 check and then we move king g7 and this position already it's clear that black is making progress and later we're going to learn various methods of how to win such position but even without knowing the theory i'm pretty sure that um, you will be able to uh, in rook and games in general sheltered for the king is the one of the most important things when it comes to uh, playing versus one or two pawns and here uh, the only thing that we need is somehow provide shelter from our king and one of the ways is say to play rook h3 move the king to h2 where it can hide from the checks and say something like this would be one of the plans uh, uh, of how we can make progress from here so um all right so it's clear that with the knight pawn we just uh, want to stay in the corner and uh, then we're absolutely safe in case we want uh, to make a draw now I have to mention a um, couple more theoretical positions uh, this is one of them uh, this time we're fighting versus um, uh, the pawn that is c7 e7 uh, d7 or c i'm sorry c2 d2 e2 or f2 and if the pawn is ready on the seventh and our king is in front then passive defense is enough so here we could just be waiting uh, rook c1, rook a1, rook c1, rook a1 and uh, black cannot do anything but remember this is only applied when the pawn is on the 7th and our king is in front and now let's take a look at uh, what if the pawn is not on the 7th and here already passive defense is not enough so in this position if white was to play rook c1 winning is a bit similar to the to the previous position uh, black plays rook to g2 and if we go to the corner he lands another check so that when king moves to g1 we can play f2 and now the only move is king f1 after which uh, black is winning the white's rook so if we go back a little bit um as you can see passive defense is not enough and if we move uh, to the side then again um, rook to h2 would win and if we move to h1 then uh, we could repeat the position with rook h2 and f2 and as you can see versus uh, any pawn that is on any actually of the squares on the uh on, on this um, blue arrows so from c2 to c uh, so c7 so from c3 to c7 and from f3 to f7 um, we have to know what is called the philodor position and the philodor method of drawing this so let's let us find number five 
and uh, here i'm going to teach you how to draw not only again against uh, just this pawn but if the pawn was on any of the of the red uh, squares over here so the method is this we place the rook on the a3 square with the idea of not allowing the black king to cross the sixth rank and create mating threats right so as we if we were just to wait right first of all um the the king could make progress and then there are various checkmate threats and it's it's not going to be uh, a draw for white so instead after rook a3 the only really way that black could be making progress over here is by pushing the pawn rooks checks on b1 b2 they don't achieve anything because we go king e2 king e1 and uh, no progress has been made so remember the main idea first of all not allowing the black's king to come to the sixth now as they push the pawn the draw is very easy we just go to the back of the board and this time we uh, see a position where black's king is not having a shelter and cannot hide from uh, the white's checks that's why i mentioned that having shelters in many of these positions is uh, very very important uh, so many people are coming to the chat uh, roy hello to you hussein shiru um, many many people and uh, very happy to see you all if uh, you're enjoying the video uh thank you very much for putting a like on 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 the stream that means a lot to me um and uh, hopefully you're um, learning about this uh, philidor position and enjoying the lesson uh, as i mentioned at the start of the lesson we're going to start with the basics but gradually we're going to increase the level and um, there will be quite a, a very challenging exercises later on that are going to be not only very beautiful uh, but also we'll see that grandmasters made many mistakes and those as well so if you solve them correctly that makes you perhaps for that particular moment uh, better than a, a grandmaster right so here yeah the point is that uh, we're getting the rook uh, from behind and a uh, black's king is unable to hide from the checks the m the most popular perhaps position and must known position in rook and games again want to emphasize if the pawn is on any of the of the red uh, arrows here or in the middle even we just put the rook on the third rank and uh, we're waiting for them to push the pawn to the sixth or the third depending on which color you play and then we get checks from behind so let's get to number six um and number six where are you hiding from me here you are and um, here it is uh, why to play there are various methods of of winning that uh, the method itself is called building uh, the bridge so how does it look like and the the king of whites uh, would like to move out somehow and uh, this way allow the pawn to move forward and promote the problem with that is that as we move out the black's king is going to continuously give us checks right and as i said in many many rook and games uh, giving the shelter for our king uh, where it could hide from the checks is very important especially if we're uh, intending to win the game so here white is playing rook c1 which will allow the black's king safely to march out and then the black's rook won't be able to give checks so rook c1 rook to d3 king moves out say king to e7 and now a very important move uh, for white as black is uh, defending d8 here enough we're giving this check on e1 and as the king moves out we're promoting into a queen so very simple method some might say this is not building a bridge but it's uh, very much related to it and uh, soon we're going to learn to build the theoretical and everyone's agreed uh, bridge so this one is again very important and simple and uh, here uh, for the for the first time we're going to build the, the most uh, common bridge uh, it's also called bridging they made the verb out of it and others could also kill, call it luciana position at least that's how it's known so it's perhaps the most important uh, winning rook endgame to know white is absolutely winning here and, uh, and many of other complicated uh, rook and games uh, lead to this particular position where we know that it is a theoretical win and we no need to further analyze those positions as we know how to win them 
So, as always uh, in these similar end games, White's King needs to get a shelter so that the Black Strong wouldn't be able to check it. We want to move out and uh, and then promote the pawn. Unfortunately, now it's not possible because okay, Black Strong can just check us from the side and. Uh, uh, nothing is gained from that as we uh, we cannot hide from any kind of checks now the key then is to uh, move our king to other side of the board so that the black's uh, rook cannot give it checks from the so-called long side if you can see sometimes players divide the board into longer and short since the pawn is uh, on the e file then this side is called long and the red side would be called short we're gonna learn about uh, more in a moment so first we go rook g1 and uh, we cut off the black's king if black kings go to f6 then winning is very easy now it turns out that the black's king is helping us and giving us a shelter from any kind of checks and next move no matter what he plays uh, white is promoting the pawn so a bit more challenging would be what to do if black plays king to h7 yes david we're looking at luciana position exactly also known as building the bridge or or bridging they made a whereabout of it right so here white plays um, a weird looking move that is not weird if you ever seen luciana position but i imagine if this is the first time for you in the rook and games then it might look a bit weird uh, we're placing the rook on the fourth why well let's take a look it will give uh, it will give white a shelter uh, from the black's rook checks so black's rook goes to d2 and doesn't allow the white king to move to the side and white is lurking out so we're going king to f7 well black is saying okay perpetual check right check check and offers a draw right and now you're going to see the point of the the rook of ours on g4 so after king uh, to f6 and king to f2, we're going king to e5. And after rook e2, here comes the goal and the purpose of the rook being on g4. We can play rook e4. And exactly that, what you see on the board, is called building the bridge. It's sort of like building a shelter for our king um, so that it could hide away from the black checks. And no matter what they play, okay, they could take the rook, but... Uh, we're going to promote our pawn so once more i'm going to emphasize because it's very important we give a check and force black's king out that gives us an opportunity to sneak out with our king later and the move is to put the rook on the fourth or on the fifth if we are playing with the black color so rook to d2 and then our king moves out and you see this beautiful bridge uh, by the way don't go king king f5 here i have seen that right <laughs> right that's a draw right so you go king f6 and then you move to king to e5 and this is what we are aiming for yes logic engine rook g4 all right that's how it is yeah okay number eight so I want to put the same position on the board, but um, uh, this time it is black to play. And black can draw this position because the rook is on the good long side here and uh, black is able to provide the checks from the side. So the rule of thumb to remember is that the king of the defender wants to be on the short side and the rook wants to be on the long side. So again, the short side is, uh, the sides are divided by the pawn that is on the board. So if pawn is E, then this is the long side because there are four uh, squares here. And this is the short side because there are three. So king on the short side and rook on the long side. What is the logic behind it is that white's king takes so long to catch the rook uh, that inevitably the pawn say on e2 on sorry on e7 would drop so for example king moves out and we're giving checks and king moves out and we're giving checks and when he is going to c7 we're in time to to to, to skewer the the pawn and if king b6 we can win it now if say it was the short side and the rook was on b6 um you can see the problem rook gets attacked too early and there are no such skewers because rook already would have been on b7 where it would be um, in touch by the opponent's king right so a super important rule can save you many many times 
Um, right, uh, in the last position, there was um, also an interesting question asked, um, and it's a very popular question, I have to say. So say we go here, rook on g5, it's touched by the opponent's king. That's the problem, right? So you, it, that doesn't mean that you don't win, right? But it will take you much longer. Now you have to set everything up again somehow. And, um, and it's a bit different because, okay, you go rook e5. Again, you don't build the shelter for now from, uh, from the checks. Because I could say could go king g7, right? And it's, it, it at some point could get a little bit weird, right? So king d7, it seems like you are saving your king from the checks from the side, from the from the back. But there is also the side, right, where I can provide you uh, perhaps the checks, right? Although here I'm think I think that I'm just promoting, right? King c6 and king f7 doesn't stop me because uh, the rook is wo watching over uh, the e8 square. But the point is that here the rook is touchable, whereas on e g4 it's not touchable. And then that method just works precisely without any additional variations for you to need to know, right? So uh, that is the main reason. It's further away from the opponent's king. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, all right. Very glad that you understand, Aunt Chris. Okay. All right, and, and I, I'm welcoming everyone who is um, having any kind of questions related to the positions. Uh, please do ask. I enjoy answering and uh, having discussions, anything chess related or related to this particular topic. And um, don't be shy. Say hello. I don't bite. All right. Um, so here I have already an advanced exercise for you. It is why to play and draw. And I want you to choose between two moves. Rook h3 attacking the pawn or rook h8 and going for the back. Only one of these two draw. So one of them is incorrect. There are many moves that draw, but one of these is losing. What would you play with white? I'm also welcoming everyone who just joined to say hello in the chat. Also, if you are enjoying the lesson, please do put the like on this video and... Uh, Try to be active and participate in, in the lesson as much as you can. Thank you very much. So this is already a bit more advanced, definitely. So um, Antrikish is suggesting rook h8. Prolific is saying rook h8. Alessio is saying rook h3. And also Hussein is saying rook h3. So we have the suggestions 50-50. Mitchell is saying rook h8, Raul is saying rook h8. So now, okay, we have more people saying rook h8, right? Roy, hello, nice to see you again. Hello. Right, so in this particular position, um, rook h8 is correct. Most of you are correct. And here is why. And a, a very common uh, rook and game, I have had definitely this in, in, in a game. Um, after rook h3, the point is that black's king can make progress with king to c1. We're in check now. Okay, we move king b3 because from there we can still attack the pawn, which is going to be on c2. Black plays c2. And now the problem is that after usually drawing move, which is rook to c3, there is just king b1. And now you wish that rook was on h8 because you could give a check at this point, right? And then you would be saved. Now... King must take the, probably the rook, and this is, okay, a theoretically winning endgame. Now, against a human, I can win this easily. With black, against a computer, it's pretty hard, right? Because computer are very good at defending. So, in the same line, if we play rook h8, then it is a draw. So, for example, king to c1 check, king to b3, c2, king to c3, attacking the rook, not allowing any... any um, any king b1s because king b1 is uh, met with rook to b8, right? And now it's different, right? So um, I guess you have to walk king c1 because otherwise you're just losing the game, right? So that particular check on b8, I guess, is what um, what is the main line and prevents uh, black from drawing that. Again, any rook d1s, for example, right? Um, I could just stay with, say, rook a8 and uh, our king on c3 is simply a monster, right? So... Um, Again, king to b1 is met by rook b8, right? And the draw is agreed. Black finds it very hard to, to defend from and find the shelter for, for his king, right? All 
all right um let's go to to number 10 then uh, lots of practical exercises i have for you not only from theoretical positions trust me um here uh where should we go with the king two moves draw and two moves lose so would you choose let me just ask that up or down right would you go up or down would you go up with the king or down how to make a draw here the way i would encourage um, my dear students to um, to practice the rook and games is uh, setting up these positions and playing them versus computer uh, very very important you can do it uh, on say chess 24 just set up the position and practice 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 these particular positions versus computer if you can draw this against computer you're confident uh, that no human is a match for you in that right so perhaps it's one of the one of the only things we can practice against computer otherwise they're just crushing us okay we have um hussein is suggesting up um roy and alessio is saying down and mitchell is saying up whoa right so 50 50 again very nice uh, if you were all correct all the time i would be actually wondering if uh, i pick up the right exercises right you're not learning anything now if i know that some of you or even big part of you are incorrect then i know that i'm teaching you something very very relevant and you could imagine getting yourself into these as well so Ankrish is saying up and Kasun, hello, welcome to the chat, is, is saying um, up as well. So in this particular position, uh, we're going to um, analyze both. Uh, here you have to go up. So if you go down, it loses. For example, let's just say we go random king a1, then rook to f1 check, and there's going to be c2. And after rook d8, we're not moving to the left, right, with the king. Um, as uh, that would uh, uh, give white uh, the check on, on c8, but not, not that it matters, but even easier would be to go to e4, I guess. Or, uh, okay, both win, doesn't matter, it just lost, and eventually the king will just, uh, will, will just catch uh, the rook, right? So, if, uh, if we go king to b1, in, in this case, then it's the same thing. So black just gives a check on f1, forces us, and rook c1, and basically you just cannot prevent c1 queen. Like whatever you do, you cannot put two defenders on it, right? So you cannot both play king b2 and rook c8 uh, with one move. Now, how do things change if we go up? So king say to b3. Okay, we're still allowing a check, uh, say rook to b2 check, but then king a3. And black is unable to make progress here, at least from it's it's a dead draw basically, because c2 runs into king b2, king takes b2, and we're in time. And uh, we we'll also have always keep in mind the long side to keep checking the the black's king uh, from there, right? Now, if um, if they were to go c2 after king b3, then we just go rook to h1, and we're stopping and controlling c1 square, right? So here, if we get, say, king to b2, there is nothing that stops us from uh, getting the blockade that we need, and so we reach a draw. So we have to go up uh, because, uh, because of exactly that, right? c2, we are in time to play rook h1, and if rook b2, then it's very hard for black to be making progress from here. So imagine, like, uh, black plays, for example, rook b7, and we're just keeping on checking and checking and checking and checking, right? That's why rook belongs on the long side as we're defending, and king belongs on uh, the side of short, right? Right, so practical ones, as you can see, I would again set up these versus computer and practice, practice, practice. If you have a friend, do that with friend. I pick computer because if I can draw this against computer, then I am not afraid of anyone in, in design games, right? Now, this one is theoretical and must known position um, against the corner pawn. Um, white is moving up. Uh, the question is, where should black go? King g7 or king e7? That's the question for you guys. Everyone who has just joined to the stream, I can see there are a lot more people right now. Don't be shy and uh, say hello to me in the chat. I, 
I would encourage all of you to participate in the lesson actively by giving questions and answers to my own questions in the chat. I don't buy, don't worry. And also, if you're enjoying the stream, um, thank you for putting a like on this video of mine. That helps me to understand that I pick the right examples and you're enjoying the lesson. So massive amount of answers. Uh, people are screaming uh, G7. The poll is asking where I am from. Um, currently, I'm living in a, a Europe in a country called Lithuania. Very interesting that we have so many, for so many answers. Hello, Rishi. Hello, welcome to the stream. So I, I see no King E7 at all in the chat. Whoa, right? Everyone is saying King to G7. All right. So everyone knows this stuff. Yeah. The point is that if we go King to E7, right? We bring the pawn to A7, and I guess that was your plan. Then Rook to H8. And there is a skewer. Mamma mia, right? We don't want it, that, right? So the point is that rook a7, rook h7, and and black is losing the rook. And otherwise, we're just uh, promoting, right? So in these positions, rook must, king must stay on g7. And that is enough to draw. Now, if white pushes to a7, then we just go king h7, king g7, king h7, king g7. And it would be an easy draw. So for example, all right, we can play a7 and let's just say king is walking oh it's our move okay and walking and walking and walking and walking right and then at some point when it's on b7 we start giving checks and as i mentioned today at the start having the shelter for your king in rook and games super important more important than many other things you wouldn't believe like in how many and games this is the theme right so that's how you make a draw and then okay you keep on checking and checking and checking right and you go back eventually right but they might not play uh, a7 right so why and if you want to play for the win you wouldn't believe how many people i tricked with this plan right we go the king to a7 right rook will move out let's play let's play this on the board king f3 and imagine king to h7 what if they just all they knew was what I showed you before, right? This is lost now. He goes, he goes, and he goes, and he goes, and he goes. And black thinks this is a draw, but now we have a seven square for the king, right? So now our rook could move out. That was the point that we have the shelter for the white's king. And as the king moves out, okay, here, king b7, and then the red carpet. That's how I call it when we, when we have this. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone who is uh, enjoying the stream. This means a lot to me and uh, everyone who just joined, uh, actively participate in the stream, ask me any kind of chess related questions about um, about anything you, you, you want to know more, right? Or particular positions. And also, if I ask questions, I encourage you to participate actively in the in the chat. So this is not enough to draw. So how do we draw? And this is a very known maneuver for black. Then the move is rook to f1, double exclamation mark, right? And now when king is moving to that left up left corner, black is putting the rook on f6. So the idea is to cut off the white's king and at the same time keep attacking a6. So now it's sort of a barrier uh, that white's king cannot cross, right? Black's rook is preventing from that. So let's see, king to d5, rook to b6, king to c5, rook to f6, and there is no progress that you could make from here. Now, it's very important that you don't put the rook on g6. Why? Because you will want from here to check the white's king from the side, right? So for example, rook to f5, and you get the same position where white doesn't have a shelter. But after king to b7, if your rook was on g6, right? then you wouldn't have this rook g7 check, which you do have now, right? Rook f7. And so this is a, a way uh, to draw. So Ashes is asking, how is double fianchetto opening? Is it advisable to go for it? I know Spanish people say fianchetto, I believe, and that's how it's supposed to be spelled. But I know that everyone else is saying fianchetto, especially in uh, British or American English, right? That's the way to pronounce it. 
is it advisable to go for it right uh, regarding the openings depends on your level just it's more important to play the opening itself well than knowing the opening theory so i don't know your exact level but if you're say below 1600 then controlling the center developing the pieces castling knowing those things are first more important than theory right and then you have to fit play the openings that fit your own character and style right so if you're more lazy don't play the main lines if you're not lazy if you're a hard working person then you could be playing the absolute main lines if you're sharp against d4 play benoni's play benko gambits where there are lots of tactical possibilities right if you're solid right play slav play queen's gambit decline it depends on the person and there is no uh, golden truth that's why grandmasters are playing different stuff as well right um yeah it also depends of course on the opponent all right i i have many more beautiful ones for you today um okay one last theoretical one that uh is super super important so now this why to play someone is also asking d4 or e4 if they want to attack in the old days it was always e4 that is attacking or that was how it was more known so with e4 you get more attacks and the recent years that have changed at the highest level so now i play d4 to get the attacks right so but i would recommend that at your level i think if you want to get more attacks in general only in general e4 should help you a bit more right so here is the hardest maybe theoretical position that you have to learn today but also a must known and it's going to be a decision where to put our king short or long side and as as i mentioned the rule of thumb is to put the king on the short side as a defender and put the rook on the long one so here we play rook to c8 and it's going to be hard for black to hide from checks so he plays king to c3 um if they play pawn to c3 it's just philidor so we keep on checking and checking and checking and we have seen this there is no no hideout for black's king from the checks so we draw it like in the one of the previous positions but he could play king c3 and now it's a big decision so left or right guys where do you go so i hope you managed to uh, those who were from the start i hope you will say the correct answer um where to go with the king left or right b1 or d1 where to go guys yeah yeah mate mate is threatened right by the way hello to you i never know your name but you're always in my streams very nice to see you again hope you're doing well okay i'll Alphonse, so who's saying everyone Cispal king to b1 except for Cispal, he's saying king to d1 so where do we go left or right guys yeah all right guys so as i mentioned um when you're defending in the rook and games king goes to the short side and the rook goes to the long side right so here king to b1 the logic behind that is that we will want to put our rook and check him from the side so as for example okay say rook g1 happens and for example rook to c1 to make progress now as we going for rook h8 and side checks we're very very far away from the black's king and that that is why the rook wants to be on the long side like it takes so much time for him to get to the rook that in the meantime you will just catch this pawn and set up a blockade right that is being the point of why you don't want to go to the with the king to the short uh, sorry with the king to the long side so let's test a couple of options say uh king to d3 then we play king to b2 and we're watching over the c3 a c3 square over here so for example check again king to c1 he goes back to c3 and we're walking circles right so it's just uh, a repetition if he goes something like c3 rook to d8 philidor again we know we keep on checking and it is a draw right so after we play king a2 they could try rook to c1 now we go for the side checks as you can see black's rook is not defending the the black's king well from the checks so he could try rook to d3 with the idea of blocking the check so for example rook h3 rook d3 now it's also possible to say try rook to king to d2 
but then again just side checks and king to b2 eventually and we're blocking everything and uh, it is a draw so as they're playing this rook to d1 with the idea of blocking our checks from the side we're gonna play rook to c8 back right and it's very hard from here for black to be making progress so one of the tries is king to d3 then we go king to b2 again must prevent here c3 not the only way but easier to remember when you have to prevent something right there is a threat easier on the memory so check for example king to c1 rook to h2 and we're walking basically in in, in circles right so say king to c3 king to b1 and draw and as always c3 fill the door keep giving checks and it is a draw so this is the most advanced theoretical position that i wanted to show you today but it's also a must know so someone wants to know how to blockade if the black king walks towards the white's rook yeah sure so there are many ways to, to win. first of all uh, let's check the uh, the one with king to d1 right because that's what everyone is uh, is interested in what happens if if the white's king goes to the long side so say first of all uh, rook to g1 and now your king is the one that will prevent the white's king uh, the white's rook from checking our king right from the long side all right so many move wins here actually there are too many moves that win but say rook c1 is simplest and we're gonna eventually bring the king to b2 and c2 and push the pawn so for example you're waiting i go king to b2 you're giving a check now i go king to c2 and i have already a resource of pushing to c3 right so rook to c7 c3 now i want to move out the rook so rook say to here rook to b1 rook to c7 and i'm eventually as you can see i'm making this progress and black will win by building the bridge remember like bam bam check and luciana position what we have been learning today or even like not not like that but sometimes i could just move to the b3 right but i think that uh, this is what we learned today right give a check kings move out and then the the king will move out right and uh, the rook will of blacks block the check right there was um i hope that answers the question and yeah th there was another question that i wanted to to answer but uh eccentric horse very nice to see you today again thank you for uh for also helping me to, to make this stream because he just answered the question so as we were um discussing why king cannot go to so okay at which point did did you guys have a question here probably right so they were asking what happens if uh if black's king is walking towards the the white's rook right and we said king to b2 so now first of all your rook is hanging and uh i have no no defensive task because your king is just so far away from attacking my rook in the first place that this is not even the long side it's a long long side right it would be uh, enough even with the pawn to d4 but now it's like you're three tempo away from attacking my rook it's just wrong as you can see right so you're moving somewhere and uh, anything draws here right say here right and the idea is i'm gonna pick up the pawn right it's it's walking in circles and a draw right so that's why remember the thumb rule of thumb king goes to the short side as a defender rook goes to the long side so that opponent's king couldn't touch your rock thank you joshi for a compliment many many uh questions also uh what if rook c2 right i think eccentric is also helping me there in the chat right okay so again i would like to make a couple of points um do set up these positions for example set up this particular position uh against the computer maximum level against stockfish say and chess 24 and just make a draw just play it for 50 moves with the white color as soon as you make a mistake go see what was the mistake and try again and again and again you need to make a draw here against computers say 40 moves yeah and you will see you're gonna make some mistakes computer will find some resources and you're gonna stop learn what was the problem you will know what what to do instead and that's how i like to to test these theoretical positions or even some practical ones 
um and then i'm not afraid of any any grandmaster like after you you draw a stockfish that's that's it right right everyone who just joined the chat i'm welcoming you to actively participate in it as you can see chat is active please do ask me chess related questions um participate in the questions and answers and also if you enjoyed the the lesson i would appreciate if you could put a like on this video uh, thank you very much yes so exactly um exactly gg and uh in these uh, in these particular positions uh, if white doesn't make a mistake it is a draw so black cannot develop the initiative so y yoshi is asking where um he could uh, try this against computer there are like ask google and uh, like just uh if you type into google engine uh, and set up position there are like uh, many resources one of them would be chess24.com right all right uh next ones i have so many beautiful ones i have to be in time to show you those do we have more theoretical ones okay this one was also a real game and it's kind of theoretical okay so this is the question f7 or rook h3 guys grandmaster made a mistake here so f7 pawn to f7 or rook h3 one of them is winning and one of them is not All right, so in this one, uh, the the mistake that was made by by Grandmaster was Rook H3 and Magnus Alfonso Sispal, HAA, Kiada, Daruka, everyone is suggesting uh, pawn to F7, and that is right. When you have a pass pawn, you gotta push it, right? Um, there are many other wins. You could also go Rook D8, King E7. Now, why Rook H3 is not winning? It's instructional how Black makes a draw. So we go King G6. If uh, if white goes f7, there is a check, and that's the problem, and then we pick up the pawn. So white needs to go rook g3, king to h7, then white played f7, and now we have this rook c8, and we are defending this way. Notice how after rook c6, there is king d7, and it's kind of like rook was on the long side, but not on the long part not the distant part of the long side and this is exactly what you guys were asking right this would have happened sometimes if the king went to the long side and rook would have ended up on the short side the rook just gets attacked and it wins the crucial tempo right so say here and next move uh we're promoting uh, the pawn so instead um uh, instead of that rook has to go to the back rank and here it is enough to draw king e7 check and uh check right again here there is no possibility of playing king d6 because rook f7 right so king e8 and we're checking and after king d7 we just go back to the to that side of the board and if you ever bring the rook i bring the king right so this is how the draw is agreed so for example rook to f3 and king to g7 now instead you guys were correct at the very start so if f7 say rook okay king to g7 we give a check if you go to f8 is uh, it's mate right you cannot go there and once the king goes to the right we promote so rook e2 is a better try here and then we're gonna have a hideout right king to c1 and now the luciana position okay kind of luciana i exactly don't know there are so many luciana positions right the point is to have this uh, hideout right so his own king is preventing from giving the checks to my king right and so it's sort of a shelter that's why i emphasize throughout this whole lesson right having a shelter is the probably the main thing in the rook and games like it's in every position as we can see right so i hope we have time for beautiful ones now okay All right, this one you could try. Win by force, why to play? How to win by force here, you guys. This is beautiful, but very simple one. And then I will give you hard, but beautiful ones. 
they're gonna shock you so this one we can dedicate like 30 to 60 seconds okay guys i want to leave time for uh the ones you have never seen before and those were gonna be mistakes made by grandmasters in the later ones yes everyone is screaming right all right so f6 i had to show this the idea is if king f6 would give a check and promote right, that being the point and okay if king to f7 we have this idea of rook h8 right they pick up the pawn we get a skewer right that's the typical idea right also of course if they go to the side we just i guess right we just push right right that being the point right okay uh now where are our beloved ones 15 let's try let's see no this is very long game okay black to play and win not very easy but uh, easy still just not very easy so black to play okay joshi we have already made a lot of videos on uh, on the openings if you go back on chess 24 stream you will see a lot of these hello alan very nice to see you Josie is saying I, I say right too much. Maybe I need to come up with a synonym for that word. I will say yes or okay. Okay, Josie. I will do my best not to say that too many times. Okay. I'm trying to get better at everything. Just like you do. All right. Forgive me for this. Someone is saying they had uh, this position <laughs> two hours ago. Hello, Alan Jackson. Hello. Very nice to see you. So black to play and win. Many, many different suggestions. Okay. So one of the suggestions was uh, rook to b1. And after king e2 to go um, rook g1. With the idea of winning the pawn. But maybe white has rook a4. Right? What about that? So king to f5, right? We're prolonged in line. Now rook takes h4 here. And this one you cannot win, right? White's king is just in time. Right? Monster king by, uh, by, by uh, white, right? Too active. Okay? Good try. Yes, my English is my second language, guys. I'm not a native English uh, speaker. But I hopefully I speak with an accent that is understandable for all of you. Yeah, Josh is also suggesting rook to g5. So what's the idea, first of all, of uh, how can the rook get to g5, right? <laughs> That's illegal, guys. I flipped the board, right? Maybe I should flip the board like that and black spawns are going down. All right. So there are also suggestions of playing h3. Many, many, many. So if h3, are you sure it's enough? So what if I take? How do we win this? White's king is very in very good place, right? So say rook h2, for example, and okay, anything draws here probably. I can continue giving checks, right? And we're gonna get to some kind of Philidor again, right? Yes. So some of you are correct. Congratulations. I can see Torteboro is also uh, suggesting the right move. It's actually guys rook b1. And then after king e2, we play h3 and it just runs right harry the pawn wins so okay we can try some things say h3 g2 next move we promote right you, you can give some checks but eventually we'll get to your rook and checks will stop and there is pretty much nothing you can do over here right like check doesn't help right i'm just going towards and you have no ideas right so it takes and g2 being the the point right so I think the best you could do is g4, but again, we're strong enough to know this is winning, right? Okay. So this was rook b1, 
and followed by h3 congratulations to those of you who solved this one um more beautiful ones i had one very beautiful one i gonna get to that mm. Okay, this one, black to play and win. I'm gonna put it from the white's point of view. White to play and win. Black to play and win. Kevale is saying he has an exam today, uh, tomorrow, but still watching this. And Lord Chess, hello. Hello, everyone. So, how does black win this one? Josh is asking how often do I stream? On Chess24, I stream on Tuesdays and Fridays. So Tuesdays on um, 8 CEST and on Fridays at 2 CEST, like today. So for now, that's my schedule, guys. Welcoming all of you to show up on Tuesday again. Many suggestions. As these are tricky because also Grandmasters made mistakes, right? In, in these ones. So, first of all, many, many people are suggesting rook to f2 um, in this position. Um, how does um, white make a draw here? What, what about rook b8? So now the idea is that if, um, if rook takes on g2, um, we can play king to f5. And it's going to be a very, very sad day for black as I think we're getting mated. So this idea is very easy to miss, and I don't blame anyone who thought, uh, for example, this particular line was winning. So the idea is very strong, and simply give, getting this uh, checkmate threat, of course, you're not forced to enter, enter that from here. You could play rook g5, but then these checks get really, really annoying, right? So say rook f6, I could imagine king g4. It's even for me not so clear, to be honest, right? But I could imagine that this is a draw, right? But even I have to think because uh, there are many different uh, deviations and we can divert from the main line uh, quite, quite a lot. So the winning move again here is uh, perhaps unexpected one. Um, Black is playing F3, which is just ridiculous. And it's a very, very hard move. Like even if I give this to a um, grandmaster, I would not expect him to... I would expect him perhaps not even to solve this, but even if he does, it's not immediate. It's very, very hard because I showed this for the purpose of beauty. It's a very beautiful one. And after rook takes f3, it's ridiculous. Rook takes rook to f2. I mean, just look at this, guys. Ridiculous. Chess player uh, 101 is asking if I play Blitz. I actually almost don't play at all. Um, I'm not a chess player, guys. I'm, I'm only a chess coach. For the last eight years, uh, my main job uh, is teaching chess. I'm teaching for around 40 hours a week. I unfortunately have no time to be playing uh, and uh, I'm just a chess coach, guys. If I should say just, right? No, guys, I, 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 I barely play. So, I play some online, of course, right? So, if, um, if we look at this position uh, after rook to f2, what is the main idea? Well, <laughs> what does white do is the question, right? So, after rook f4, black is going king to g5, and now g2 will drop. So, white needs to go back. And now we enter a winning position. So rook to g2, for example, king to e3, and uh, white's king is not getting there in, in, in time. So for example, rook to f6, rook to the side, right? And this is just winning, for example, rook here. And as you can see, we have seen something like this already before. Simply white's king is not where it's supposed to be. So this idea really of uh, f3 and rook f3 was not only missed by uh, grandmasters in the game but also by those who studied the game right and it was only later that uh, with many many brain power maybe even the machine power it was figured out to, to be uh, winning chess player just 
Pine Castoni. Anyone who is uh, wondering uh, about me, if you type into Castoni, I think into Google, I think there is gonna be plenty of information, guys. Right? <laughs> Very simple, right? All right. So this was um, at the end. I wanted to show you a lot of uh, these beautiful ones. So, yeah, we have a question by Eccentric Horse. At, at which point, after Rook takes G2, you want to go Rook F8 here? Hmm, let me think. My king, if I move the Rook, will be able to hide on, G2, uh, on, on G2, right? If I move the Rook away. So, for example, say, okay, give a check. Depends on where you go. Maybe, maybe, like, after King F3... I'm lucky to have rook f2 skewer, but otherwise I'm getting your king very active, right? So, okay, let's say king to d3, and now my king will be having this hideout on g2, right? I think that's how it's won, right? So, I just move it to the side, say, I don't know, a2, right? And as you're making checks, I guess I just go to, to hide on g2. I don't know if rook a2, or I want to cut your king on the, away from the, from the king side with... Uh, we say rook to e6. Maybe that's a little bit better, right? So keep checking, right? First of all, I just have um, the king hideout on, on g2, and I think this is just Luciana position eventually, and we're going to win, right? So say king to f4, check, right? Say king to g4, rook g8, and as you can see, I'm making progress, right? Does that answer the question, eccentric? This one was not in my uh, analysis, so I had to figure it out live. But I think that the point is that after rook f8, all I have to do is free this square for my king to hide without allowing your king there in front of the pawn. Ah, you missed the skewer, right? So, but I don't have to go on the second. I could cut off a centric horse, your king, uh, from the king side, right? So I think maybe the first try rook a2, uh, like, ah, exactly, missed it after king f3. Yes, 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 there is a skewer, right? Because king f3 otherwise is a draw. That's why when you made that comment, I thought that I might uh, have failed, right? But I did not, because uh, this is, of course, uh, winning because I, I tested all of the positions on the engine. It's just that some wins are not uh, not so easy, right? So, everyone who will watch um, this one more time, I encourage you to. At first, we started with very easy and theoretical positions. Then we went to the practical ones that arise a lot. And at the very end, we saw huge, very hard examples that are just for the sake of beauty. And they have uh, only small relevance because it's, uh, it's missed by the top players. But we love seeing those because they give us a pleasure by seeing something uh, very very nice as that picture skew right so i would like to thank everyone who joined the stream today um, i would appreciate if you could put a like on this video um, i really um, appreciate everyone who uh, said hello and participated actively in the chat today i hope to see you all on tuesday stay healthy my friends continue loving the game play chess online study it and uh, see you on tuesday